What is up, my new Vim friends? Today, we're going to be talking about Flash.invim and how it compares to Leap.invim, which are two different plugins that we can use to jump to different locations within our buffer or across splits in NeoVim. If you haven't checked out the video before, check it out in the top right hand corner on Leap.invim so you can kind of have a baseline of how that plugin works, how to get it set up if you're interested, and then compare it to what we're going to get into today, which is Flash.invim. Let's jump into how to install Flash.invim first. All right, here we're in our NeoVim instance and we already have it open. Check out my video before. I'll, I'll link that again in the top right hand corner about how to set up Lazy.invim, which is the plugin manager that I use and I personally recommend, especially if you're using Packer because that's no longer maintained and is deprecated. So switch over to a really awesome package manager, LazyInvim. In my config, I have something where we have a plugins.lua file, and then I have a plugins folder. If I go into here, then this is where our flash.invim config is. Basically, this is just copied right from the config docs on the website, and this sets the event very lazy, so it doesn't run until we trigger something. And then the keys, so these are all the different functions that we're gonna talk about in this video. And so I'll get into more detail here, but you can set this to whatever you'd like. Make sure that you don't have any conflicts, which you can do using check health. You can run this, and if you have which key installed, then it'll check those for you. If you have telescope, then you can run this where it shows the key maps, and I'll show the text of that on the screen here. If you run this, then you can also search for different key mappings that you have on your system and make sure that you don't have any conflicts whenever you're trying to set this up. All right, the first usage of flash.invim is to do a key mapping, which for me is S from the default config to trigger require flash jump. And so basically we're calling the jump function. This is the one that I use most often and we can directly compare it to leap.invim. So if we hit S, then I'm using the Tokyo night theme. And so my color scheme works to gray this out. And now it is waiting for me to hit a shortcut. And so I can do I in, and you can see that I have insert a few times and then another uh, link there where I could jump to. And it highlights the current selection in orange. So if I hit enter on this first one, then I jump right to it. If we do that again and we do I in, you can see the other ones are in blue. And so if I hit the jump label, so I could hit A, K, L, or U. And if I hit L here, then I jump to this location down here and I can jump back and forth. If you've seen the leap.invim video, we need to use a different keyboard shortcut for going up or down or across splits. And for flash.invim, we only need to use one key binding, which I think is really, really nice and might beat out leap.invim just on that fact. Now that we have our split and I have a different buffer open on the right hand side, if I hit S and do I in, you can see now that I can jump to the other side of the screen with P, or if I do that again, I can jump back over doing L and I'm over here on the left hand side. So this is really convenient. I like the visualization of the match characters, the distinction of whenever I'm jumping to the first one or to the other jump labels. I really like that. And I really like that about flash.invim. All right, we're back over here inside of some code so that I can show you another feature of flash.invim, which is the tree sitter mode or using the tree sitter function. I have this map to capital S. And so if we hit that, then this is going to select the different tree sitter nodes and I can highlight them. So if I hit C, then I will highlight the keys block. And so we can see that here. If I deselect that and then I hit capital S again, I can hit C and it highlights this entire block, which tree sitter is parsing this out. And so it'll be different in whatever programming language you have, but it's a really nice way to then be able to change it or yank it and do something that I need to do while I'm coding. The next feature that I wanna talk about is really, really cool and is something I wanna dig into more. It's remote flash. And so if we call that using the remote function, I have that mapped to R from our config earlier. This will take a motion. And so if we hit Y R, then this is going to let us jump to a different location, do an operation, and then jump back to our original position. And so it's gonna do that all on the original flow. So let's say we wanted to grab this insert line. So we'll jump down here to K. And if I hit Y again, 
this is going to copy the entire line. So I'll hit Y and you can see that it puts me right back to where our original cursor was and I can hit P because I've copied that text. You can see that this is really nice to be able to quickly grab something out of a different section, especially if you're coding and put it into right back where you were editing instead of needing to jump to that location, do the operation and do it all through your head and instead rely on this remote flash operation. If you have any ideas of how to tie this all together or you're using it yourself, I'd love to hear some of the workflows because I think this is really, really cool. A very similar workflow, but a different function for flash is the tree sitter search. And so what this one does it is mapped to capital R for me. You can hit Y R and it's going to gray this out and then we can find a line. So let's say that we wanted to yank this line that we had just previously done with J. And so you can see that we grabbed it where our cursor is in that new position. And if you want to go back to a line that you were previously editing, you can hit G and then semicolon, and that'll take you back to wherever you were. And then if I paste that, then you can see that I have that in my buffer and you can do that with a lot of different other motions. So this one has some overlap with the remote flash, but still pretty cool to be able to grab lines, maybe through a little bit of a streamlined workflow, but doesn't give you the ability to jump right back to where you were. So pros and cons of those different features. So let's get into the next one. All right, this one took me a minute to figure out how to actually enable. And so if you want to toggle flash mode to enable whenever you are searching, whenever you're typing forward slash or question mark, whenever you're searching in text, you can actually trigger jump labels so that you can jump exactly to where you want to go instead of needing to search for something and hit N or capital N to quickly get to it. To enable that, we're going to do a colon and then control S. And so if I hit that and I hit escape and I try to search for something, we can search for insert and you can see that it's going to autocomplete in my search, but also I have these jump labels that are not going to conflict with any of the characters that I'm searching for. So if I hit X, then it'll jump to that first one. And if I try to do that search again, and let's say I wanted to jump to the last one with you, then it'll jump me there. This one is a little interesting for me. I not sure if I really see myself using it. I probably want to use S and jump to different locations instead of searching. I'm probably accomplishing a different task in that scenario. So I'm not sure if I'll continue to use that, but it's a cool thing if uh, somebody wants to actually use that. The last piece of functionality and probably the one that you'll notice most often is the enhanced F and T binders. And so, you, you know, you can use this within a line to jump forwards or backwards and find a character. F is going to jump you right to that character and T will put you right before it. So if we did a F and we wanted to jump to the letter A, then we can do A. And you can see that now this is highlighted for all the matches across the rest of the file. And so usually you just hit jump once and you hit semicolon or comma to go forwards and backwards, respectively. But this lets you have a little bit more flexibility and options and be able to do it across many lines. So maybe you want to jump to like a couple of lines down and you want to do it quickly. You could use this to do F and quickly get there. Usually, like I said, whenever you're doing the normal default behavior, you're doing semicolon, which you can do this way. Comma is going to take you back. And you can also see that whenever we go back to our original match, it highlights the previous above us. And so we could actually go backwards if we needed to, or we can continue going with semicolon. The same thing applies. So F is going to jump you forwards and then capital F is going to jump you backwards. The inverse would happen if you started with using capital F and then the same applies for T. So if we were searching for A, we get jumped to the letter E here instead of landing on the A. So this is really cool. It's a nice visualization of where you're gonna actually be jumping. You can quickly get to the right location, hit escape, and then you're right there to edit. So this is really cool and quick to jump to a different location, usually within a line, but I could see this maybe a couple lines difference. Now that we've covered a lot of Flash and all the different features that it offers, let's do a comparison between Flash and Leap.invim. So for me, I always am constantly tripping over needing to type two characters for Leap. I also want to mention that in Leap, you can add other extensions or plugins to bundle with it to get some of this behavior, like the tree setter highlighting 
or the F and the T enhancement. And so you can extend Leap to be able to do this, or you can use Flash.invim and you get a lot of this stuff bundled together in the single plugin. I have been tripping over the Leap.invim two character limit for a long time. I think Flash lets you be a lot more flexible. If for whatever reason I need to type out the entire word, then I can do that. And the jump label still works. I don't end up in a crazy position where I didn't expect to. So that's a plus one for flash.invim for me and my workflow. I think flash.invim delivers on this default use case the best. And then we also get into the enhanced F and T, which are super nice. And then the tree sitter mode, I think works a little bit better than tree sitter text objects. And so instead of needing to remember a lot of different key bindings, I can just remember to use the capital S and jump to different locations and grab them. So I think that's super useful. And the ability to use remote flash, I think opens the door to some really nice workflows. And that's why to me, flash.invim is kind of the clear winner here and something that I would recommend to anybody that's getting started with different jump plugins. I'm gonna review a couple more. So hop.invim is on my list and also the mini jump plugin. So stay tuned and I will compare those to flash.invim and see if there's anything different or if it's just a nicer workflow than what we've experienced so far. I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you everybody for watching and commenting. I've learned a ton from different workflows and people suggesting different things. So keep it up and I will see you in the next video. Thanks everybody.